Hocam başlayabilirsiniz. Evet. Hello everyone for the third day of the fifth Azarkel School of Astronomy. And today in the evening, we are going to welcome Professor Dr. Yavuz Unat for our History of Science public talks. He will be uh, with us uh, talking about the Muslim astronomers who influenced Copernicus actually. By the way, welcome everyone who are also watching us on YouTube, also attending on the Zoom um, channel. Welcome, Professor. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. Yes, inshallah. Teşekkürler, thanks. We have been late for some technical problems. Sorry about that. So we should get started as soon as possible. And I leave. Uh, the word to you. Okay, we can see you now. Yes. Uh, my presentation uh, is uh, Muslim ast astronomers who influenced uh, Copernicus. Uh, it was produced within the scope of the project on mechanical interpretation, uh, interpretation of the universe in medieval Islamic astronomy and its effects on the West. Uh, yes, the 15th century was a period of Renaissance. Uh, there is change in the West, in, in science in the West. The reflection of this change in astronomy was the theory of heliocentric universe, which was put forward by Mikolaj Copernic. This theory was not immediately accepted in the West, but it brought great change in innovation. He used uh, the views of his uh, pre predecessors to demonstrate heliocentric theory. Among the astronomers, Copernicus uh, benefited from were as well Muslim astronomers. Uh, Ptolemaeus uh, was constructed the theory of geocentric universe as mat mathematically. Nevertheless, uh, this mathematically theory criticizes from the time it was found. Ptolemaeus is an astronomer who performs mathematical editing of the geocentric system. He explained the uh, irregular moment, uh, moments uh, of planets with uh, epicycle and eccentric model. This is the uh, eccentric circle and uh, epicycle uh, model. The eccentric uh, circle model uh, for the motion of the sun. Uh, this is the concent uh, this is the epicycle uh, motion models, concentric different and epicycle models for the motion of the sun. Uh, but the uh, theory of planets so complex, Ptolemaeus' theory of planets uh, so complex, the planet located in H moves uh, on the center. Uh, H, the planets, uh, moves on the C center, while the epicycle circle moves over the F centered circle. This is the concentric circle. D is the eccentric circle. EA uh, shift to center, center, external center, or E is the center of the equant. The measurements are made according to D, F, and E center, uh, so complex. Yes, uh, the theory, the Ptolemaeus theory, uh, mathematically. Nevertheless, this mathematical theory criticized from the time it, uh, it was founded. Particularly, these criticisms were directed by Aristotel, uh, Aristotelianists and were almost rejected by 
I shall tell you, because the system, uh, system did not uh, physically conform to Aristotle's view of the physics universe. In particular, the epicycle, eccentric, and equivalent model, a geometric mechanism, designed and used by Ptolemaeus for irregularities in planetary uh, motions were controversial. Yes, were these geometric models or did they have physical relativities? Rel relativities? Uh, mathematical astronomers suggested they were geometric models. According to the Aristotelianists, these were entities that had no physical. Some astronomers, however, preferred the middle ground, accepting these models as uh, physical beings and trying to combine Ptolemaeus' mathematical kinematic approach with the Aristotle's dynamical approach. But the criticism didn't just come from a physical point of view. The system was also discussed mathematically. These discussions were again on the axis of eccentric, epicycle, and equant. Mathematically, the most problematic celestial bodies were Mercury and the Moon. Mercury was twice in orbit, the closest position to Earth, EA perigee. Again, the Moon was getting closer to the Earth in the locations of the quarter than any other location. Ptolemaeus was able to solve these facts in part, but the solutions was not enough. Thus, three opi uh, opinions uh, emerged in the field of astronomy, especially in the Middle Ages. And astronomers went on to adopt uh, one of these three views. First, astronomical assumptions are simple mathematical fiction, and their task uh, is to save appearance or fact. Uh, Ptolemaic system, uh, system also performs this in the best way. Those who accept, uh, as, uh, accepted, accepted the second opinion went on to put another system in front of Ptolemaic system and accordingly either adopted the system of co-centric spheres put forward by Eudoxus and Aristotle or proposed new systems like the system of concentric spheres, especially by Vitruji. In the third opinion, this system was conceived as a cipher layers in accordance with the physics of Aristotle. And the eccentric and epicycle models used by Ptolemaeus were considered as a concentrate object. Ptolemaeus Almages, in which he discussed the mathematical principle of astronomy and explained the movements of the planets mathematically and geometrically, namely as kinematics, was particularly critically uh, studied by Islamic astronomers and demonstrated his mistakes. As a result, it became clear that there was, in, uh, there was a need for a new astronomy and Islamic astronomers created their own models by attempting to establish an alternative model of the universe against uh, Ptolemaeus' astronomy. Ptolemaeus' authority was shaken and Aristotle's cosmology began to crack with new theoretical attempts that began with uh, Nasiruddin al-Tusi and continued with other Muslim astronomers. These new theoretical attempts represent a solid transition between Ptolemaeus' uh, theoretical system and Copernicus' theoretical system. In context, many Muslim opposed the astronomers Ptolemaeus' explanation. Some suggested new models of Mercury and Moon and the Moon. Others tried to create new models. Among these three important additional hypotheses or models were popular among Islamic astronomers. Uh, the first 
Hayzam's uh, hypothesis or Alhazen's hypothesis. Alhazen or Hayzam accepted this hypothesis, criticizing the eccentric, epistical, and model uh, and equivalent models of Ptolemaeus and proposing the establishment of the new system without that. This hypothesis, that is, each circle only makes uniform motion around its center uh, in the dot on Ptolemaeus. Uh, Alhazen accepted this hypothesis criticizing the eccentric epicycle and equivalent models of the Ptolemaeus. Uh, Ptolemaeus. Uh, because uh, he is an uh, Aristotelian, uh, uh, the earth should be in the center, but uh, Ptolemaeus system not uh, in the center, the earth not in the center, is in the center. The second hypothesis, uh, 2C co uh, couple. 2C, uh, sorry, 2C was a well published author writing on subjects, math, engineering, pro, uh, prose, and mysticism. In astronomy, Al-2C created very accurate tables and planetary motion and updated planetary model and uh, critical eyes uh, of Ptolemaic astronomy. Uh, in the astronomy resolution, Altaskir uh, Fil Ilmir Heye, to see uh, use this model. Uh, using this model, which is called by its own name, to see proposed new but quite complex hypothesis for the moon and Mercury. Copernicus also used it. This is the uh, two C couple, uh, couple, which converts circular motion to linear motion. Uh, point C moves over the GD line, the diameter of the large circle, with the movements of the small circle inside in the opposite direction relative to the large circle. The model used by Copernicus to the convert circular motion into the linear motion. This is the uh, Copernicus uh, book. Uh, the other hypothesis is Urdi's hypothesis. hypothesis. Urdi uh, worked as an engineer and teacher of geometry and uh, built instruments for El Malik, El Mansur of Hims. Uh, in Meraga, uh, works in Meraga. Uh, to see, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Urdi, uh, Urdi subtitles uh, that is, uh, let us draw two lines on the straight line AB, equal angle A equal B, equal length AC equal AD and the same direction line CD. And of course, when the end of these two lines are joined at this parallel to the first line AB. Urdi also uses the, this hypothesis to develop, uh, develop uh, moon and mercury theories in the book of the astronomy. Uh, these three hypotheses have become very popular among Islamic astronomers, and many astronomers have tried to explain some unexplained planetary phenomena and Ptolemaeus astronomy by using this hypothesis, again by accepting the, uh, uh, the Earth as a center. center. Some astron uh, astronomers have tried to construct completely uh, completely different models of universe. The most famous among them be Truji. Uh, 
Alpeter, Alpedragius in Latin. Uh, Alpedragius uh, or Albitrugi was the first astronomer to present a non Ptolemaic astronomical system as an alternative to Ptolemaeus model, models with the planets born by geocentric uh, spheres. Another original aspect uh, of his system was the he pro, uh, was that he proposed a physical cause of celestial motions. His alternative system spread through most of the Europe during the uh, 13th century. He uh, criticized Ptolemy and tried to establish a different system from his uh, system uh, in the book of astronomy. Uh, this is the Bitrugi system, most complex, uh, and the pool of the equator, and the pool of the ecliptic, and the pool of the sphero planet. P is the planet. Uh, M is circulating at a uh, constant rate around the end pool. This constitutes the tropical movements of the planet. The sphere on which planet P is located is a common century sphere. And the L pool of this sphere travels at a constant rate, centering the M pool. This is the complex uh, system. Uh, he influenced by his teacher in Tufe, Ibn Tufe, teacher Ibn Tufe and Jabirin Eflah, uh, both of in 12th century. In the Kitab al Haya, the book of astronomy, Bitruji criticized the epistical and eccentric models of Ptolemaeus because it did not match the physics of Aristotle and proposed a new system. Thus, Bitruji established the spiral motion theory movement or uh, movement uh, al -levla -B, levla B, and attempted to explain the irregular movements of the planets by return to the theory of concentric uh, concentric spheres based on Aristotle physics. Uh, the Kitab el Haye was translated into Latin by the Michael Scott uh, in 1217 and the Moses in Tibon in 1259. In the 13th century, Grossetest, uh, Grossetest uh, Albertus Magnus, and Roger Bacon uh, were wounded by this work in their research. Another one. Uh, in the 15th century, the works of Ali Kushi, Kushi also affected both the S and the West. In his article, Risala fi hal el eshkal el maadi lil mesil, the Risale or Makalat on the solution of the equivalent problem, uh, Kushi criticized Ptolemaeus Mercury and model. Uh, Mercury model and unlike Ptolemus, uh, Ptolemaeus used a circle that move around their centers at regular speed. In his article, Fi Aslel Harit Yumkunu Fi Aslel Sufleyan, the Risala or Makalat, on the use of the outer planets for two inner planets as it's for other, others. He gives evidence that eccentrics can be used in place of epicycles on planet, planets. The same claim is uh, made in Copernicus. Kuschi, Kuschi, in Kuschi's Alphatia, the issues of the sun's relevance of the planets, uh, also uh, used by Copernicus and put forward by Regio Montanus, is much earlier than Regio Montanus books the summary of uh, uh, Almagest. It's probably, uh, probable uh, because Cauchy influenced Copernicus indirectly, because it's known that Copernicus has taken such arguments from Regio Montanus. The three additional hypotheses mentioned about and the work of uh, Cauchy were uh, very popular uh, in Islamic astronomy and were used by many astronomers to explain planetary movements. 
Bitrojiz works mostly influenced uh, influenced uh, Western astronomers. Astronomers, however, the moon's moons were important among the planets, and some astronomers produced and uh, produced new uh, lunar models. The most famous uh, of these is the model of uh, Ibn al Shatr. He was an astronomer, mathematician, and engineering. Uh, he worked as a timekeeper, Umayyad Mosque in Damascus. In his works, Nihayat al Su, the, uh, the recent research, and Talik al Ersat, the speech on observations, uh, he discusses uh, the regular moments of the planets, Mercury and the Moon, and Sun and sun, and suggest new models to explain them. In this double epsical system, Charter places the moon on a second surge, uh, second epicycle. These models of 2C couple and Charter's double epicycle system were also used by Copernicus, but their names or books were not references. This is the uh, Charter's lunar theory uh, with double episode, epicycle. The place is in you know, all uh, the center of the universe, and the small epicycle chamber that Christ the motion is carried uh, by the large epicycle circle. The center of the small circle, uh, epicycle circle, carrying the large epicycle, epicycle circle. Uh, is on the sphere called the common center uh, sphere. Uh, Copernicus lunar theory is the same. Uh, this is the uh, this figure, uh, the lunar theory of uh, in, uh, in Shatr. Uh, finally, uh, Copernicus studied philosophy, astronomy, geography, and astrology at Krakow University. Most of the astronomy courses at Krakow University were followed by works of Islamic astronomers translated into Latin. Among them are important astronomers such as Alfragam, Sabit Milkura, Haitam, Haizam, and uh, Jabir ibn Efla. However, the works of Tusi and Charter do not have Latin. Where did Copernicus get this information? We don't have definite, uh, definitive answer yet. The environment in which Copernicus grew up was the most uh, knowledgeable about astronomy. It is impossible to not have these researchers in their hands. How possible is it that a great astronomer like Copernicus, who is also making a revolution, is not aware of these searches. For some, Copernicus has received help from Arabic speakers, but the Copernicus may not speak Arabic. However, the astronomers next to him were aware of actions of Muslim astronomers, and probably Copernicus should have accessed, uh, accessed uh, this information in this way. Copernicus' te uh, technical results have been revealed by recent research that have previously been handled, handled by Islamic astronomers. Copernicus, by contrast, centered on the sun, while Islamic astronomers centered the earth. However, it seems that while it is not challenging to center, uh, center the sun, some preliminary steps have been taken by Islamic, uh, Islamic astronomers, uh, astronomers to make it feel necessary. And some special models proposed by Islamic astronomers have been used by Copernicus. Uh, end of the uh, presentation, my presentation, uh, thanks. Evet. Thank you very much, Professor. Question, any question? Let me check uh, both on YouTube, also from the Zoom. First of all, let me arrange this.
So now we can see each other. Yeah. Uh, would you like to share something, Kevin? Yes. Um, th th this question of how Copernicus learned about astronomy from the Middle East is interesting to me because Copernicus didn't read Arabic and, and um, uh, Nasr al-Din and uh, uh, Ibn al-Shatr wasn't translated into Latin. And uh, I found a, um, an article by a, a guy named Robert Morrison published in the History of Science journal Isis in 2014. And uh, it's called A Scholarly Intermediary Between the Ottoman Empire and Renaissance Europe. And he talks about a, a, a guy who lived in uh, Constantinople and in um, Crete and in Northern Italy, right at the time that Copernicus was uh, studying in, uh, in Italy. And his name was Moses Galliano. He was a Jewish scholar. And so that, that's the only one I know of, but th this, the, he, he could be the missing link. Maybe. Do you know anything about it, Professor Yos? Moses Galliano adında birisi varmış. Evet. İstanbul'da yaşayan ben düşünmemiştim. Evet. Yani Osmanlı İmparatorluğu'nda şey çalıştığını mı iddia şey yapıyor? Evet. Ve Girit'te çalışıyormuş. Hı hı. Yani genellikle bu tür bilgilerin zaten e, Bizans'tan geçtiği de söyleniyor. Yani Koperniye bu tür bilgilerin e, Bizans'tan, Bizans kanalıyla da geçtiği söyleniyor. E, ama... Yeah, there are also some papers telling that the, the, the transfer is made from Byzantine... Um... A manuscript, a Byzantine manuscript yes, in, in, at the time. Yes, okay. and the research dates back to the 60s when they traced that Byzantine manuscript. Yeah. So, it, yeah, that's another way of looking at it. That's true. Yeah, Otto Neugebauer found a, a Greek language manuscript uh, in uh, the Bodleian Library at, at Oxford, and that's called that, that's now in the in the Vatican Library, it's yes. Vaticanus Greekus 211. And it has um, Nasr al-Din's uh, uh, Tusi couple in it. And uh, so they were mystified, you know, here it is in Greek and, you know, how did it get here? So, so we, we know a little bit more than we used to. Yeah, maybe, but I also remember that Maybe from one of the talks George Saliba made. Oh, um, yeah. And he was he, also talking that uh, Copernicus had some priests, priests who knew Arabic and also translated for him. Uh, ah. Is it possible? I, I didn't read his papers about that, but I remember one of his, in one of his talks, he was talking about it, that Copernicus had some you know, people around him who knew Arabic and he wanted he knew that, the, that there were books but he couldn't read so he got help from those people uh, but i don't know if it's true or not öyle bir şey duydunuz mu hocam Koper'nin yanında böyle e, papazlar varmış yani arapça bilen de kitapları onlar evet evet evet yani bu, bu söyleniyor zaten genellikle yanındaki kişilerin arapça bildiği e, ve e, bir şey okumuştum ben e, Krakow Üniversitesi'nde verilen derslerin e, içeriklerine ilişkin bir makale okumuştum. Bu makalede de sanıyorum kaynakçam da olması lazım bu. Hmm. Bu makalede de aynı şeyleri söylüyor. E, bu üniversitede e, okuyan, e, ders veren hocaların Arapça bildiğinden ve bu kitapları ellerinde e, ellerinde bu kitapların olduğundan söz ediliyor. Bu yolla geçtiği söyleniyor. Ama so atıf the lectures in Krakow University back then had those books and they were able to transfer the information maybe. It would be good to look at the papers of Edward Kennedy, uh, George Saliba, uh, Jamil Regap. You know, they, they yes. invested a lot of work in, along this line. And some of the papers even date back from the 40s at AUB with Kennedy. Uh, so 
you know, it's good resources for the students yeah. if they are interested. Uh, yes, in Jamil Rajab, he, he wrote a lot of a lot of good work on that. And, and Professor Saliba, which... Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I also see some recent papers that are uh, saying vice versa. I mean, there is no such thing. There is no influence uh, in any of Copernicus saying, right? Is that so? Um, it's not my field, but... Yeah, so the, the, the recent, those kind of recent papers are also influencing the youngsters. It's a contested field. It's, there's, yeah, there's an- There's no consensus yet. No. Oh. And Noel Swertlow was an expert on all this and, and he had a, a very intellectual debate that got sort of angry with uh, Jamil Rajib. And uh, since then, Rajab has retired and Noel Swertlow has died. So um, we won't hear too much more from uh, uh, uh, one of them for sure. Yeah, but the debate is going to continue. The debate will continue, yes. <laughs> yeah, OK. Uh, maybe, Professor Yavos, if you share your slides with us, we'll put them also on the web and people can uh, take a look at also, uh, just like Professor Nadir did, uh, our students will uh, look at your references and they will try to learn more about this debate. I, I put a reference with the link in the chat box. Yeah, I, I saw that, Moses Scaliano. That's also interesting. Thank you for that. Yeah, Eureka. Owen oh, Gingrich had no idea who this guy was. So, you know, the only time in my whole life in the history of astronomy, I taught uh, Owen Gingrich something. Maybe there is a, also um, another professor that we also work with, uh, Professor Peza Dunargun in Istanbul University. And she might also know about this Moses Keliano Alaska. Good. In Ankara University, uh, Ramzi Demir in uh, works on uh, hist uh, history of astronomy. Uh, Demir Ramzi Demir uh, works on uh, Taki Taki Al Taki uh, Istanbul uh, Istanbul Observatory Taki Ittin. Have you heard of him? Uh, we mentioned him yesterday, Fakiruddin ibn Maruf, uh, the Damascene astronomer in the Ottoman court. Yeah. yeah. It would have been very different for Turkish astronomy if his uh, observatory was not torn into parts. Uh, because since then, it has been like a 300 years of delay in astronomy in Ottoman Empire and also in Turkey and like that. It was a very pity because back then he was very uh, a leading scientist on his uh, field in the age of Tycho Brahe. Yavuz'a canımıza çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Orta çağ İslam astronomisinde evrenin mekanik yorumu batıya etkileri projemiz için de bir sunum yapmıştı diye yazmış. One of our panelists, as to his attendees, is thanking also Professor Yavuz Hoca. Okay, let me check YouTube for a few more questions. Maybe we could have time. Anyone from the board? Any questions? No. <laughs> this is a very intense topic, actually. It would be great to have this conversation uh, maybe face to face in person. Yes. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> YouTube'dan yok mu soru? Gelmedi. Bir tekrar giriyorum da hocam ben çıkmıştım soruyu. Sohbette. This is a very nice topic actually. 
would be great to have this. Evet hocam. <gülüyor> Orada da teşekkürler yağmış. Teşekkür ediyoruz. So thanks a lot Professor Yavuz, Professor Nadir and Kevin for your contributions in this talk also on this Thank topic. You. It was very nice having you here with us tonight. And uh, maybe tomorrow evening we'll have another uh, history of science talk about astrolabs from another professor in Istanbul Technical University. Okay, see you then for tomorrow. Until then, thanks a lot. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao. Teşekkürler Yavuz Hocam. Ağzınıza sağlık. Teşekkür ederim. Sağ olun. YouTube'u kapatabiliriz. <gülüyor>